All right, so 6.2, integrating using U substitution. 6.1, you had a bunch of integrals, you had slope fields, but really, you have not, uh, other than the power rule, you really haven't found like a, a systematic way to find antiderivatives. A little bit. U substitution is the most popular way to evaluate integrals. Um, so, generally speaking, it's like the first thing you could try when you're trying to figure out what the antiderivative is. And it's called using U substitution. So, I'll give you some examples. Um, and it's going to become more and more evident what you should choose your u to be but that's oftentimes the most difficult part um, trying to figure out uh, what to use for u so i'm going to say here's my anti or my integral um i'll make this three just so okay so does anybody know what the antiderivative of this is Okay, you're smart enough where you could figure it out, but it, it's not obvious. Like you'd have to think about it. So what you can do is you can assign u to be something. And u is a quantity inside square roots or inside parentheses. Here, our u is going to be x squared plus four. So the process is to choose what your u is. And then find the derivative. All right, so steps, maybe I'll put them over here. Uh, choose u. Find the u dx. So we did that. Now we're going to solve for dx. Okay, so there's dx. I'm going to multiply by dx. Divide by 2x. Oops. To dx. Okay, so dx equals du over 2x. All right, uh, step three would be to rewrite the integral in terms of u. So the, the purpose of u substitution is to create an integral in terms of u, which will be more simply uh, evaluated. Okay, so right now we're going to take this integral and we're going to write it in terms of u. So it's now the integral of 3x, the sine, well we said u is x squared plus 4, so it's now the sine of u, and now we know dx is du over 2x. So it's du over 2x. Now if we did it right, and we chose the correct u, the x's should disappear. They should divide off on our current integral. And you notice they have 3x over 2x. The x's cross off. I'm just going to toss the three halves out front. And I have the integral of sine of u du. Okay. So rewrite in terms of u. We did that. And then find the antiderivative. Uh, so, antiderivative of sine u is negative cosine u. So, it's negative 3 halves cosine u. And then, uh, sub x in for the u. The x stuff back in for u. I should say stuff, I guess. Alright, so your u, we said was x squared plus 4, so our answer is negative 3 halves cosine of x squared plus 4, and since it's an indefinite integral, we can do plus c. Okay, so it's kind of an algorithmic process. Um, it works great when it works great. Um, it's not the end all. It won't be able to evaluate every 
integral, but it's probably the most popular one that you'll have all year long. Um, and there's different variations of it, but generally speaking, you choose your u, find the derivative, solve for dx, plug in in terms of u, and then evaluate it. Now, it works out great if my u here is a quadratic. And we're going to find the derivative of u. We get a linear. So I knew that if I chose my u to be a quadratic, the derivative is going to be linear, and we're going to eventually divide by the derivative because we're solving for dx. So I know that if my u is a quadratic, we're going to divide by a linear, and that's going to get rid of this linear. So I knew going in that that was the correct u because we're going to divide by one degree less than what we have for u. All right, so that was a lot of information. I will say that several times. Um, so if you don't completely understand what I was, because it has to be reinforced in order to really understand it. Here's another example. What our u is. Um, our u could be tangent x. It could be secant of x. Uh, it probably isn't going to be secant squared, but this is secant x, the quantity squared. So we could choose that as our u. Now, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we're going to divide by the derivative. So u should be tangent x because we're going to divide by secant squared, and that will get rid of this in terms of x. So to me, it's clear that my u should be tangent x. Okay, again, it's not always obvious. In fact, there's different u's you could choose um, and they would both work out. So you're not, it's not always obvious what u is, but I'm feeling pretty good about this u. And again, there might be different u's that would work out. So choose your u, find du dx, solve for dx, Write our integral in terms of u. So it's the integral of tangent, which is u, secant squared of x times dx, which is du over secant squared x. So I anticipated dividing by secant squared to get rid of this. So how's that for an anti or an integral? The integral of u. So evaluate it. Plug in what your u is. And plus c. Hey, Mr. Reclare? Yeah. Where did the one half come from? Uh, the antiderivative of u, it's just like the antiderivative of x is one half x squared. So it's one half u squared. Oh, okay. Make sense? All right, I'll have you try one. Um, let's see. All right, why don't you try that. I'll give you some time. So everybody chose 6x squared plus 10 as your u? Okay. Yeah. Good. So I'm just going to go through this. You can keep working if you want. Um,
So the x's do cross off. 8 over 12 is just 2 thirds. So 2 thirds integral square root of u du. I'll call that u to the one half. Uh, u to the one half is u to the three halves times two thirds times another two thirds. So four ninths u to the three halves or four ninths six x squared plus ten to the three halves plus c. You get most of the way through that. Kind of got st stumbled along the way. Yeah, it's the first time you've ever tried it. Does it make sense? Yeah. What did you say, Carter? What did I do here? Where did it go? Oh, he's asking where the D went. So from here to here, I didn't do anything from here to here. I just rewrote square root of u to the u to the one half. Now I did the antiderivative. That gets rid of the D when you do an antiderivative. All right, give me another one. I just change it to a definite integral. It doesn't change anything except you don't do a plus c, you actually evaluate it from zero to pi. So go ahead and try to figure out that integral. All right, so I'm choosing my u to be six x. So we could do this one on our head, but if we don't know whether to divide by six or multiply by six, the u substitution kind of takes the thinking out. If I choose my u to be 6x, du dx is 6. Multiply by dx, divide by 6. So dx equals du over 6. In terms of u, so it's the cosine of u times dx, which is du over 6. So that's the same as 1 6 integral of cosine u. Antiderivative cosine is sine, so it's 1 6 sine u. So 1 6 sine of 6x. And we're going from 0 to pi. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's 0 minus 0, right? All right, so that's what happens when I make up boundaries of integration. So 1 6 sine of 6 pi, which is 0, minus 1 6 sine of 6 times 0, which is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. If we think about what we just found, cosine of 6x uh, from 0 to pi is going to have just as much area above the x-axis, try to stay focused, as there is below the x-axis. So, Uh, window 0 to pi so that 6 is going to change the frequency but you can see it will be just as much above as it is below
just to confirm ourselves graphically. All right, questions so far? All right. Okay, so that's usually where I would end class. Um, but this year is a special year. Um, we get to do a little bit more information. So I'm going to give you another type of a question. Uh, it's a differential equation. We're going to solve um, by separation of variables. Um, our example is dy dx equals e to the x minus y. I think my projector needs some riddling. I think that's... Please stay focused. All right. Okay, so solve by separation of variables. So what we're doing is we're going from a differential equation to a regular equation. So we're going to get the original equation. Um, we do not have an initial value here. So our original equation is just going to have plus c at the end. We can't get the exact original. We can get the general form of the original, but we can't get the exact one without uh, an, an initial value. And it says separation of variables. So up until this point, we've had just x's on the right side. Okay, Our differential equations have just x's. Well, we've got y's now. So what we need to do is we need to separate them. We need to move the, the y's over here. Okay, so the dependent variable, whatever it is, needs to move over onto the left side. So it's dy on this side, that's where the y's go. So just using our exponent properties, that's the same as e to the x times e to the negative y. Or it might make more sense to say e to the x over e to the y. So if we're going to move the y's over here, you cannot do that by adding or subtracting. You have to either multiply or divide. Okay? Well, we can just simply multiply both sides by e to the y. And I now have e to the y dy dx equals e to the x. Now on the AP exam, it's guaranteed that there be solving by separation of variables. Okay? It will be on the AP exam. U substitution will be on the AP exam. This is a really big topic. This might be a six-point problem right here on the AP exam where they have an initial value. You'll get maybe two points out of the six just by getting this far. They'll say on their score sheet, separated variables, and we just did that, and that gives you partial credit. You don't always get partial credit on the AP exam. You do on this type of problem. Okay. So now we're ready to integrate. So we're going to integrate dx. Integrate dx. So if you notice on the left side, these dx's go away. So you're left with integral of e to the y dy equals the integral of e to the x dx. Okay, so we can evaluate both of those. They're actually about as easy as it gets. The antiderivative e to the y is e to the y. Uh, antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. Notice I put a plus c on both sides. Those are not necessarily the same. So I'm going to call that c1 and this one c2. And then we're solving for y. Our answer is going to be the original y equation. So we have to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract c1. And what is c2 minus c1? C. I feel like we're in Spanish class. Yes, c. It doesn't matter. A constant minus another constant is just always a constant. Okay, so I get e to the y equals e to the x plus c. So in the future, when you do integrals on both sides here, you do not have to do a plus c on both sides. Don't ever do that. 
just toss a plus C in the right side because that's where it's going to end up anyways. So integrate, integrate, and just toss a plus C on the right side because that's where it's going to end up. Okay, we're one step away. We're solving for Y. So we have to undo E to the power. So we're doing natural log of each side. So Y equals natural log of E to the X plus C. Okay, so we have solved the differential equation. It's not as exciting when you don't have an initial value to plug in. Um, if you had, like, at, you know, maybe you had y sub 0 equals 1 or something like that. If that was given to you, right after you integrate right here, plug 0 in for x and 1 in for y and go. Okay, so maybe I'll just pretend like this was we're done as it was created up here. Like you, that would be your answer. And keep going here. Okay, so if they ask you to just solve this, your answer is right here. If they give you an initial value, I'll say y of 0 equals 1. As soon as you integrate it right here, plug in 0 and 1. Now, the reason is because your c's are going to change if you're going to start doing operations on both sides. You can you can solve for y first and then plug them in, but my recommendation is to plug them in right after you integrate. So you know that you haven't changed its c. Because if you like took a square root of each side, the square root of c is c, but it's a different c. So it's just easier just to do it right here. So 0 for x, 1 for y, so I have e to the 1 equals e to the 0 plus c. So c equals e. Oh, that's 1, yeah. E to the 1 equals E to the, that's 1. So E to, thank you. E equals 1 plus C. I'm recording right now, Xander. There you go. Oh, you missed it. I'll take it. Alright, so C equals E minus 1. So now, we can plug that in for C. So I get E to the Y equals E to the X plus E minus 1. And then you can do natural log of each side. So y equals the natural log of all that stuff. That would be if you had the initial value of 0 comma 1, that would be your answer. All right. Questions? Questions?